For this demonstration, I'd like to start with the production configuration page. Here we can track the different pipelines and the components that support those pipelines and how these match up with the flow diagram that we just took a look at. The first component I'd like to look into is the HS Fire Server Interop Service. This component can be added to a production to dispatch incoming RESTful API calls to the Fire endpoint to this component instead. That allows us to interrupt the flow and then do things like data validation or specific routing based on the HTTP method type. That validation and routing is being handled by Fire Interop Router. Once the routing logic is executed, the next component in the pipeline is the HS Fire Server Interop Operation. That operation is what is handling the incoming request and figuring out what to do with it based on the uh, payload as well as the method type. This component will be the heavy lifter for unpackaging the any fire payload and then submitting it to the fire resource repository. Another pipeline that we're going to take a look at is the CCDA pipeline where we're taking the full patient record that's coming in as a file and we need to convert that into a fire bundle. The first step is to pull in the file with our file inbound adapter. And then the next step is to dispatch that to our fact SDA factory BPL. And this is going to handle a lot of different object types, but one of its primary functions is to take the incoming object and convert it into a format that is fire friendly. We're transforming the, the incoming file into the internal canonical SDA format. This SDA format is important because it's effectively the Rosetta Stone of all the different protocols that work inside of Virus for Health. SDA sits in the middle and Fire and HL7B2 and Custom XML all are spokes that can be converted into or out of each other through the SDA format. Once our CCDA object is converted into the internal SDA format, we can then dispatch that object to the built-in Fire DTL uh, SDA process. What this process is going to do is take any SDA that is being sent to it and convert it into a Fire bundle. Once it's a Fire bundle, we package it up as a Fire interop request and then send it to our operation that submits that bundle to the Fire resource repository. The last service I want to talk about is the Java PEX service, which is working with our Java device to take in the uh, device fire resource as a JSON payload and then saving that inside of Iris for Health so that we can take it and submit it to the fire resource repository. Now I know this Java is getting everyone's interest peaked, so let's take a closer look at the Java code and how this is working in tandem with the Iris for Health production framework. So the component is a standard component called Enslib PEX Business Service. What this business service allows me to do is execute Java code through the Java gateway that's then going to interact with my other components. So for this component, we can see this is the jar file that is hosting my program. My class name, my Java class name is my fire business service. And then I have a remote setting of target that's telling my Java code which component inside my production to send my uh, object. And what this looks like in Java is a public class that extends service. So this is all emulated code or projected code uh, out from uh, the production framework into Java. And what this comes with is a bunch of methods that are important for interacting with a uh, production framework. For example, the method onProcessInput 
is taking in uh, the message that I'm building, the Java object of my request, which is just a, a string, basically a string container. That's all it's holding. It's taking in that message, that object input, and then using the Java projected send request async to then send that object to my target. And we can see here is my emulation of a device is just a JSON string that is a device resource. The big takeaway here is that if you have more familiarity with Java code, you can actually write your components or interact with other Java programs and bridge the gap between Java and the production framework in order to execute your Java code just like it's any other business component. I think that's really cool and I hope you do too. So now that we have defined our pipelines and how all the data gets into the Fire Resource Repository, let's take a step back and think about what are we going to do with all this data now that it's aggregated? Well, one of the things I want to highlight today are the Fire uh, search tables and how these are exposing the data within the Fire Resource Repository in a relational form. Search tables in Iris for Health are defined to assist the search parameters defined by hl7.org. The raw data stored for the Fire Resources is in JSON, but these relational search tables allow for quicker uh, searching or querying of the specific search parameters. These tables are generated automatically when you define a fire endpoint and are internal to Iris for Health. So without further ado, enter systems reports. Here is a very basic report that is a table of a aggregated list of patients that have a specific device and a condition code for COVID-19. You can figure out that these three pieces of data are being selected through JDBC from the fire resource search tables. This is just a taste of what InterSystems reports can do, but I hope that today's demonstration sparks your creativity and ingenuity for building uh, impactful reports, dashboards, tools, using InterSystems for Health and the Fire Resource Repository.